Hi, and welcome back to the Grow Taller Guru YouTube channel. Can I ask before you go any further that you please like this video and also subscribe as it really helps me out as a content creator. And if you do happen to lose your Wi-Fi connection, 3G, 4G or 5G connection, this video will be easily traceable later on. In today's video, we are asking, do your parents' heights matter if you want to grow taller? Now, pretty much on a daily basis, I get asked some variation of whether it's possible to grow taller considering somebody's dad is such and such a height and somebody's mum is such and such a height. Sometimes people will tell me about their entire family heights. <laughs> Not to single anybody out from the last video, but I just picked out a random comment as an example. And the comment is from Rayan Merza. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he or she says, I'm 16 and I'm 5 foot 9 and I want to get to 6 foot 1. My dad's 5 foot 11 and my mum's 5 foot 4. And Grandad is six foot two on Dad's side and five foot ten on Mum's side. Do you think I can get to this height? Well, let's find out. Let me start by saying that your parents' heights are a very poor predictor of your height. As an example, I want to talk about a show on TV called Little People Big World. In the show, there are two parents, Matt and Amy Roloff who both have dwarfism. Matt is 122 centimetres, which is about four foot tall, and Amy is 127 centimetres, which is about four foot two inches tall. Now, quite opposite to the popular belief that we are destined to be as tall as our parents, Matt and Amy actually have three tall children and only one child with dwarfism. The eldest son, Jeremy, is 29, and stands at 178 centimetres, which is about 5 foot 10. His fraternal twin, Zach, has dwarfism, and stands at 130 centimetres, which is about 4 foot 3 inches. Molly Roloff is 25 years old, and stands at 174 centimetres, which is about 5 foot 8 and a half. Jacob, the youngest sibling, is 22, and stands at a similar height to his older brother, Jeremy about 178 centimetres, which is 5 foot 10. So, in actual fact, all the children are taller than their parents. Even Zach is a good 3 inches or 7.62 centimetres taller than his father Matthew. But the greatest height difference has to be between Matthew and his two sons, Jeremy and Jacob. They are 56 centimetres or 1 foot 10 inches taller than their dad. So if we use this example, even if both your parents were dwarfs, then there is only a 25% chance you will be of similar stature. Even then, you could be taller than them. Like with Zach, who is 3 inches taller or 7.62 centimetres taller than his dad. But what about identical twins? Surely they will be the same height as each other. Not necessarily. Even with the exact same routine, diet and lifestyle, identical twins can still have different heights. One example of this can be the Hodge twins. The Hodge twins are famous YouTubers and stand-up comedians. They have been following the same diet and training regime for years. Yet, there is still a one inch difference in their height. They even made a comment about it on an Instagram post where they are back to back. One twin was clearly taller. Interestingly, there are many cases of twins separated at birth who are in fact completely different heights. For example, when Doug Rausch met his identical twin, Howard Burak, almost 35 years after they were separated, from the moment they met at the airport in 2006, it's clear that Doug is 3 to 4 inches or 7 to 10 centimetres taller than his twin. This supports the theory that the environment plays a huge role on how tall you will become. Doug must have done something different to Howard to stimulate this growth. So if we don't get the majority of our height from our parents, where do we get it from? 
Scientists still have no conclusive evidence to what gives us our exact height. However, one thing all seem to agree on is that it's a combination between genetics and the environment. But how much of a role does the environment play? Well, 30,000 years ago, during the Stone Age, men of the Gravettian hunter-gatherer culture were an average of about 6 foot or 183 centimetres. Then during the Agricultural Revolution, 16,000 BC to 4,000 BC, men switched to a lower protein, higher grain diet, and they lost about 8 inches in height on average. Apart from a small blip during the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, due to urban crowding and disease, human height has got bigger and bigger ever since. So what does this mean? Well, just from the general diet change, we can see that the population shrunk by 8 inches over 12,000 years. We are slowly creeping back to the huge average height of the Gravettian hunter-gatherers at 6 foot tall. In fact, if we just isolated Dutch men, they have now surpassed this already by 0.92 centimetres. But what about other countries? Why does it seem like we have more taller individuals than ever, but also many smaller individuals than ever? One theory is that because of a huge population increase, we see a lot more variation between individuals. Even though we don't have exact figures for how big the population was in 30,000 BC, scientists estimate the population was around 200,000 people. Whereas today, just over 32,000 years later, the population is 7.7 .7 billion. That's 38,500 times bigger. With this huge increase, it's not surprising that in the past 100 years, we have not only had the tallest person in history, but also the shortest. Not just that, but also bear in mind that during the Gravettian hunter-gatherer times, there must have been a survival of the fittest or natural selection sort of lifestyle. Having the extra height could have provided great benefits during that time. Perhaps being able to run faster or climb trees, for example. Okay, Lance, so if my parents' heights don't fully determine my height, then how can I know ahead of time what my maximum potential height is? Well, one thing scientists do know is that it's not just about how tall your parents, grandparents and ancestors are, but also their lifestyles, thoughts and traits that have an effect. DNA is rewritten every day as we adapt to our environment, and along with the mix of our ancestors' genetics, we sometimes also inherit these DNA edits too. For example, in a study which fed mice high-fat diets, it showed that the mice got fat. But more importantly, the female offspring of the mice, who were replaced by normal-sized mothers, still ended up 20% fatter than mice from skinny parents. In another example, male mice who were trained to fear a fruity odour passed this sensitivity on to their children and grandchildren, even though their offspring were never exposed to it. So in terms of growing taller, this could mean that even if you come from a long line of short ancestors, then you could still end up being tall. For example, if your mother or grandmother were trying to adapt to being tall at some point in their lives, then that could send a strong enough signal in the DNA which could give you the opportunity to reach a height only they could dream of. Although there is no way of knowing yet whether you have this signal in your DNA switched on or off, the only way you will reach your maximum potential is by being very lucky or encouraging it. One thing I do believe is that if your DNA is switched on for growth and you also take steps to encourage this, then you will grow very fast. Many people like myself and Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans had very fast growth over a summer period. Anthony Davis actually grew from 6 foot 3, which is 191 centimetres, to 6 foot 10, which is 208 centimetres. 
That's seven inches or 17 centimeters in three months. So even though I'm pretty sure Anthony's DNA was switched on for growth, he definitely helped encourage it with all the diet, exercise, stretching and sleep he got during that period. But what if your DNA is switched off for growth? Is it still possible to grow taller or encourage a second growth spurt? Is it possible to switch on that part of your DNA that gives you height? Although I don't want to rule anything out, what I have noticed is a certain sweet spot for individuals who encourage very fast growth spurts in a short period of time. They are typically 14 to 24 year old girls or 15 to 25 year old boys. Now, if you're outside that age range, then don't worry too much because overall, I would still say the peak time for growth is still 10 to 28 in girls and 12 to 30 in boys. In fact, the individuals who have a long growth spurt actually get more overall growth from their starting height to their finished height. For example, Jeremy Lin, who plays for the Toronto Raptors, grew 12 inches over one year, which is still very fast, but not as fast as Anthony Davis. But Lin grew five inches more overall. Similar with Rustam Akhmetov, who I spoke about in my last video. From what it seems, Rustam was never destined to be tall. With Rustam, I believe that he managed to mentally turn on his DNA in preparation for a growth spurt, and he also encouraged a long growth spurt over three years using a combination of diet, exercise, stretching, and sleep. What about girls over the age of 28 and boys over 30? Is it still possible for them to grow taller? Yes. There is still a chance for women who are 28 plus and men who are 30 plus. But around this time, growth becomes much harder. Not only must they be very strict with their diets and sleeping times, but they should be following a very disciplined growth taller routine. The good news is that even with these ages, your DNA will still constantly adapt to the environment and to stimulus but it can take more time for results to show as you get older. The older you get, the more determined you have to be. Unfortunately, there is going to be no conclusive way of finding out what your exact height or maximum potential will be without trying. Short parents, grandparents and ancestors are not a good insight to your genetic potential. There are just too many variables working at one time. Regardless of the odds that you may feel are stacked against you, I have had many customers improve their height by 3 to 8 inches, especially those under 30 years old. One thing you could do for a bit of research is ask your parents, grandparents or even great-grandparents if there was ever a time in their life which they desired to be taller or even if they attempted to grow taller. This could give you an idea to whether perhaps your DNA has already been primed for growth. I think one of the reasons subliminal music is so popular today is people want to encourage their body as much as possible to turn on the aspects of your DNA that will give you a healthy growth spurt. And when you combine DNA that's primed for growth with a well-devised growth taller program, then you'll absolutely get the height you're looking for. So, I hope you enjoyed that video on how your parents' heights relate to you. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And also you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I will leave the links in the description box below. And for more tips, tricks, secrets and methods for growing taller, stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Bye.